Greetings, class. You have reached the Human K channel. Hans Asenck was one of the most important psychologists of the 20th century. Today, we're going to learn more about his life and what he did to help people. Hans Asenck was born in Berlin. In 1934, he moved to England to escape the growing power of Adolf Hitler in his home country. He wanted to study physics at the University of London at first, but because he didn't have a strong academic background, he was told not to. Asenck was disappointed, so he went to the university and asked about other science fields. He didn't know it, but psychology was brought up. He said he didn't know much about psychology at first and asked what it was all about. Still, he went into this field because he wanted to do science, not knowing what was in store for him. During his long and successful career, Asenck wrote an amazing 79 books, some of which were for the general public, and an even more amazing 1097 journal papers. By the time he died, he was the most often quoted psychologist in the world, which shows how influential he was. Tragically, after Asenck died, his wife decided to throw away all of his personal and professional papers, which means that future generations won't be able to learn from them. The Asenck Personality Inventory, the Asenck Personality Profiler, the Maudsley Medical Questionnaire, and the Maudsley Personality Inventory are all tools that Asenck made to measure personality. These tools have helped us figure out how genes affect personality traits and make the science study of personality a bigger part of psychology as a whole. At the University of London's Maudsley Hospital and Institute of Psychiatry, where he worked for most of his life, Asenck did study on how to measure personality. Even though he agreed with Cattell that personality is made up of traits that can be found through factor analysis, Asenck was not a fan of the method because it could be subjective and was hard to repeat. Asenck used personality tests and experimental studies with a wide range of variables to complement factor analysis and try to get a full picture of personality traits. His second wife, Sybil, who had a PhD from the University of London, worked closely with him. They worked together to make a lot of questionnaires that they used in their study. The Async Personality Inventory is a big deal because it took 12 years of study and 20 factor analyses to make. Async himself said that his wife's skill, patience, and endurance made a huge difference in their work. Rarely do scientists, no matter what field they work in, publicly acknowledge the research contributions of their spouses. This shows how much Async respected and liked Sybil. Now, we're going to learn more about Hans Asenck's interesting theory of personality and his study on intelligence. Asenck's theory of psychology is based on three factors, which he called, superfactors. These categories are groups of traits or other things that make up who we are. Let's look at them. The first measure is extroversion versus introversion, which is shown by the letter E. Asenck said that these traits have been seen as important parts of personality since the time of the ancient Greeks. The second dimension is N, which stands for neuroticism versus mental stability. And finally, P stands for psychoticism versus impulse control, which has to do with how the superego works. Asenck said that these factors can be found in almost every tool ever made to measure a person's personality. His Async personality inventory has been adapted and used successfully in almost 40 countries, from Italy to Kuwait. If we look at the list of psychological traits that go with Async's dimensions, it's easy to see that people who score high on the E dimension are extroverts and people who score low are introverts. Even though our social and environmental experiences change over time, Async suggested traits and dimensions tend to stay the same. For example, a shy kid is likely to stay shy through adolescence and into adulthood. Studies done in England and Scandinavian countries show that Asenck's aspects, especially extroversion and neuroticism, stay the same over time. Let's now talk about Asenck's work on intelligence. Even though he didn't include intelligence as a factor of personality, he knew that intelligence had a big effect on personality. Asenck noticed that people with a higher IQ, like 120, tend to have more complicated personalities than people with a lower IQ, like 80. Also, Async study showed that about 80% of our intelligence is inherited, which shows that genes play a big role. 
This means that social and environmental factors only account for 20% of ability. Now, we'll talk about the fascinating study done on Hans Async's three dimensions of personality. These studies have given us more information about what each dimension is like and how it acts. First, let's talk about being outgoing. Research has shown over and over again that extroverts tend to have happier feelings than introverts. Also, extroverts have lower baseline amounts of cortical arousal, which means they need less stimulation from the outside world to reach their most alert state. When it comes to neuroticism, people who score high on this trait tend to have low self-esteem and feel guilty. Even though they have trouble with their emotions, neurotics can do very well in fast-paced, stressful jobs. On the other hand, their speaking skills tend to be worse than those of less neurotic people. High results on the psychoticism dimension show that a person is a psychotic because they are cruel, hostile, and not sensitive to others. They often have problems with drinking and drug use, and they often act in ways that are violent, antisocial, and focused on themselves. It's important to remember that these results come from research done over time on big groups of people. This lets us draw general conclusions about the links between these dimensions and different traits or behaviors. Even though the environment can have an effect on our personalities, study shows that extroversion, neuroticism, and psychoticism are mostly determined by our genes. In other words, our genes play a big role in all of these aspects. These study results have helped us learn more about how different parts of our personalities affect our feelings, actions, and preferences. They teach us a lot about how complicated people are and how nature and environment affect each other. Remember that research is an ongoing process, and as new studies come out, our understanding of these aspects may continue to change. It is important to look at the new findings in the field with a critical eye and find out more about them. That's the end of our talk about what researchers have found about ASENC's personality traits.